When the police got there, it's important to note now we're on the gun and Chapman. Chapman didn't have the gun on him at the time. According to most witnesses and Chapman himself, what happened with the gun was after Chapman allegedly shot John in the back, which is something that Chapman has stuck to for a long time, he sometimes said he dropped it. Some people say Podomo shook the gun, the, the, the doorman, a man called Jose Podomo, shook the gun out of Chapman's hand. And then another witness from a cab said that he saw Podermo kick the gun to the back of the driveway. I think what's important for people to get their head around with this case is you're looking at a very narrow tunnel, probably 15 to 20 feet across, 30 feet in length. At the back of the driveway, you've got some iron gates. Chapman was at the, at the front of the driveway over to the left. So what we've got here, <clears throat> we've got the driveway. Yeah. The Lennons have been dropped off here on the street. Yeah. Where that sign is, roughly, yes. is where Chapman was standing okay. by all witness accounts. The Lennons are walking into the driveway over to the right to this door here. Right. Now this door at the time had two glass vestibule doors. They were kind of like a windbreak. Oh. Okay. They're, not, they're not in this picture. But right. in the 80s, and you can see them on this picture here. These are the wind. This is the this is this driveway from the other side. So these are the glass doors yeah. that were by the entrance. Okay. So the Lennon, that's where Chapman is. The Lennons are walking over to this door over here. So they walk. They're walking from Chapman's positioned on the left over to the right of the yeah, driveway, which is very important. Whether John or whether Yoko walked in first, you would think that very simple detail would be. Mm. nailed on by now but that's still up for debate because sometimes Yoko has said she was in front and sometimes mm. she said she was behind in fact at one point she even said that they walked in together and they were jockeying for position which for me in a 25 foot driveway doesn't seem very feasible mm. so getting back to the gun Jose Padermo allegedly kicks the gun after Chapman's fired it to the back of the driveway where there's some iron gates mm. what then happened was he Asked Chapman to leave. This is the doorman, Jose, to, to Chapman. Chapman didn't leave. At this point, Chapman decides to get out a book, The Catcher in the Rye, famously, and starts to read it. Jose then walks to the gun at the back of the driveway mm -hmm. and starts to pace around the gun. Now, at this point, another man turns up, a guy called Joseph Manning, who is a lift elevator yeah. operator at the Dakota. He comes out of a door on the right-hand side of the driveway, opposite the vestibule area that Lennon was walking towards. There's mm. another concealed alcove. This where, is after the shot? After the shots. Joseph yeah. Manny heard three shots in the basement. Mm. He comes up to the driveway. Mm. He says he sees Jose Padermo, the doorman, pacing around in an agitated state around the gun. And he sees Chapman by the street, calmly reading a book. Mm. So... Jose then instructs Joseph to take the gun, mm. pick it up. For some reason, Jose didn't want to pick the gun up. He asked Joseph Manny to pick it up, and he asked him to take it away so Chapman can't use it. So we have to ask ourselves the question, why didn't Jose do that himself? Mm. He'd kicked the gun away from Chapman. Chapman is reading a book in a docile fashion. Yeah. Yet for some reason, Jose wanted Joseph Manny to pick the gun up, and Joseph dutifully did this. Uh, and Joseph took the gun down the lift elevator into the basement of the Dakota and he hid it in a drawer. So when the police turned up, there was no gun on Mark Chapman. Mm. The chain of evidence on the gun had been completely broken. Mm. So we have, to take, we have to take Mark's and Jose's word for it that that was Chapman's gun. Yeah. 